Dan, I want to tell the, uh, I want to hear about your, your brawl for all experience, but I want to tell everybody my brawl for all experience. So <laughs> I was working the TV tapings the, the night of the brawl for all, and you were there and you knew me from all the dentist shows. And you said to me, would you mind getting in the ring and rolling around with me? I'm thinking to myself, you're Dan Severn. Are you kidding? Of course I want to get in the ring and roll around with you. So we're just, we're just, bro, whatever, you're taking me down in a working way. Of course, you know, we're just loosening up, stretching. You're taking me down. Then you had me in a hold. You go, look over my shoulder. Is the Godfather there? And I go, yeah. You go, okay. So we're rolling around a little more. You go, and you were just, you were just, you were feeding me body parts. You're like, reach over here, grab my left arm, and take me down. Okay. So I did it. We came back up. You're like, grab my left leg. You kept just telling me exactly what to do. So it looked like I was out wrestling you. Yeah. So great. Hey, when, so we get in the back. I'm like, man, that was awesome working out with you. But why we, why was I taking you down? You're like, I wanted to think I was rusty. <laughs> again psychology i mean yeah. again I, I tell people that athletics is both physical and mental most people prepare the body they'll, they'll they'll lift they'll run but this is the greatest tool you'll ever have mike and and, and i proved that just even using my own career you know, when you look at the fact that there's there's only what there's only, only uh, I think, five men in the world that have over 100 cage fights on one of the five. And there's only four men in the world that have over uh, 100 victories on one of the four. Now, the ironic part is I have competed against the other four. I've actually beaten the other four. And the closest one to my age is 12 years my junior, closest one. And then, and then when you look at the fact that being lifetime chemical free, but here's the real kicker. I only did two true training camps in 20 years when i say it made me true i took out 32 days of my life for the uh uc number five and then and for the ultimate ultimate i took out 35 days where i left my family behind i stayed by myself i ate by myself and and then basically i just i did nothing but but basically eat sleep and and train and it, it, did it all work? Yes. I mean, but but the point that even when I did return to my family, I had to re-engage. Uh, I mean, because I was I I was hardened. I, I was hardened. I, I literally because that was during the no holes barred era. And what I mean by the no holes barred era, most of your your viewers, they're they're used to seeing mixed martial arts, MMA mixed martial arts, has either forty seven or forty nine rules today. Back then, they only had two. Those two rules were no biting, no eye gouging, end of the rules. And even then, those two rules were not grounds for disqualification. You literally, I mean, you could have, you could have eye gouged somebody at that point in time. Big John would have slapped your hand and go, you know, don't do that again, Mike, and give him back his eyeball. You know, that's the what, what and again, I, I say that comically, but there was a match where, um, the Alaskan polar bear, Paul Varlins, was actually eye gouged on a couple occasions, had problems with his eyesight, and then uh, a couple years later, literally lost eyesight in that, that eye. So it did actually happen. So a lot of people, uh, Americans are really quickly to forget what happens. And they they go, they, they roll on. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, when you talk about all the stuff that's happened during the COVID last couple of years of COVID, stuff like this. Americans quickly forget 9-11, well, how quickly Americans forget because they get so busy with life. They get so busy with Sorry. distractions. Yes, sir. They just don't, re true. they just don't understand. Yeah, very true. Well, what happened with the brawl for all for you though? I know you were in it, you won your well, match and then- the, But the funny part was, okay, because when they first came up with the concept idea, when I say they, um, I'll, I'll just say the upper echelon staff personnel of WWF. All I remember was one day they called all the talent into the cafeteria. Again, whatever show we're at, they always, what again, what I, I was marveled at was when you showed up to a building, because it, it, it's, it's always a different building. But the moment you walk in, because there's always a parking lot area that you'll see that, that you walk in and, and you'll see that they have these, all they've got all these papers taped up on, onto the wall right. and you walk right in and 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 uh, you simply know where cafeteria is this way, Vince's office that way, and uh and and where the locker rooms are. And so you 
they, they, it's a great operation. It's almost like a military type operation, how they come in there and just lay everything on out. And so they, uh, the road agents gathered up all the various talent and they brought them into the cafeteria area. And they started explaining this concept, this bra for all. And when they started to explain the bra for all, um, they said, well, the only two people that are not allowed to be in, in it is Ken Shamrock, Dan Sever. And so I had one of the road agents that was standing right next to me. I go, well, do I need to be in it any longer? He said, no, he says, you can go. And I left. So I wasn't even supposed to be in it. This goes on for, for a, a, a few weeks. And then all of a sudden, one night, because I, I get, I'm at one of the other uh, shows, waiting around to see will I actually be performing tonight because you could be on there and, and they had like a big, uh, they had a big chalkboard up there with all the basic right. matches that, that should be there. But if a match goes long or if a promo goes long, all of a sudden they need to scratch a match. But you, you could be, you could have been already going. I was like, boom, your match is gone. So I'm there waiting around just to see. And I, one of the road agents comes up to me and they're like going, Hey Dan, how would you like to be in the brawl for all tonight? I go against who and how much? They gave me a name. They gave me a price tag. I go, okay. I go, but I don't want to wear gloves. And I go, you can't go out there. You can't go out there bare knuckle, you know, because they're not allowed. I, I wish, again, that's one of those things in hindsight, because it's like, I wish I would have went out there with the gloves on and just would have told the, the, the referee, hey, take these back off. It's all part of the deal. <laughs> and, and he would have took them on off. Because I would have never, I would have never thrown a real punch with my closed fist. But I, I was always good at throwing palm strikes but then trying to wrestle with boxy gloves on, it very limited your ability. But I mean, I, I, I took, I took, uh, uh, I took down my, uh, my, my opponent there uh, a number of times. I, you know, it just, I was not, Dan Sever is never going to win this. This Dan Sever is not, not a striker. I'm a grappler. And I would say that you have to be for the arms reach in order to punch me and stuff like that. I was always good about closing the distance to get the clinches. I was really good with throws, trips, and uh, things of that nature. So, I mean, I, I basically won my match against the Godfather. Once I came back out of the ring and I, and I get passed through the, through the curtain, that same road agent comes up to me and goes, now you're out of the, of the thing. So again, how this whole concept comes up with, with uh, this bra for all, I actually think some of the higher ups were all sitting around partaking of a few beverages, started okay. getting a little bit braggocious with each other. And then came up with this concept, which was it was it a very intelligent idea? No, no, because it doesn't fit the format of professional wrestling. Now, had they came up with this concept and it would have had professional wrestling involved with it, it would have been a great, it would have been a great product that they could have done. All it did was it, it exposed people and it got people hurt. I mean, it was supposed to be the big debut for um, Steve Williams. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dr. Yeah, for Steve Williams, Doctor Death, Steve Williams. That was his his big big thing right there. So, and and I right part was even in, in college when when Steve was playing football and wrestling, he uh, he was known as Doctor Death. Then I remember being at, at a wrestling duel meet, and they were announcing it, and, and as he walked, and again this is at, in Oklahoma, and as he walks out of the mat, his whole crowd is all booing him. And he's like, he's blowing him kisses and stuff like that. I'm thinking this guy was a worker even then. And, yeah. and, and he wasn't even, wasn't even remotely close to being involved with professional wrestling yet. That's great. If people want to find you to book you, where can they find you, Dan? Well, again, uh, danseverin.com. That's that's my website. Um, it, it's under construction right now. But, uh, you know, the email address, dan at danseverin.com, you know, my, my contact information is on there but uh you know the website you, yeah you you can actually still still see still still uh, still see things but you just can't order anything off of it but dan awesome awesome dan again thank you sir this was great um dan yes 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 mike perfect right there nope